A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians! Welcome back to another video. If you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe to Flamble Maths too. On the one hand, there's going to be a nice spicy outtake regarding the symmetry of this function here and inverse function over on Flamble Maths too. Link will be there in the pinned comment uh, and, and whatsoever. It's quite an interesting fact regarding this function that we're going to talk about today. And also, I'm going to start with calculus too pretty soon over there and all this higher school mathematics. So make sure to subscribe and watch the videos there and to enter support your channel this way. We are going to do mathematics gone wrong done right yet again today and we are going to take a look at the last false logarithm rule I could come up with. Logarithm of x times logarithm of y being equal to the logarithm of x times y. If you are wondering why I'm saying why it's a little Ozark's reference. Best Netflix series per se. Trust me, it's pretty freaking good. And at first I couldn't come up with a solution to this thing just because I just did it way too complicated and I couldn't come up with a nice solution but it's actually really easy and the graph looks kind of spicy yet again so we are going to take a look at the graph at the end yet again and yeah just keep watching it's going to be quite interesting. At first we are going to make use of the well-known logarithm property that logarithm of x times y is logarithm of x plus logarithm of y meaning that's log of x log of x plus log of y. Now we already came pretty far. This thing can frick itself because we don't need it anymore. But now we can actually solve for one variable here. Let's go for y because then we have y with respect to x as some kind of function. Okay, so we are going to subtract log of y on both sides, leaving us with log of x times log of y minus log of y being equal to log of x. And now you might notice that we have log of y as a common factor right here. Meaning we can actually factor it out, leaving us with log of y times log of x minus 1 being equal to the log of x. And yeah, cool thing. Now you could go ahead and exponentiate both sides and play around with the expression a little bit more, just like you would play around with your <laughs> girlfriend at home. All right, good old fabulous maths reference here. That was my name back then. But we are going to go a step further and make use of the logarithm property. That logarithm of y times something, let's call it a, is the logarithm of y to the eighth power. Meaning we are going to bring this um, factor that we have here into the inside as an exponent, leaving us with the log of y to the log of x minus 1 power being equal to the log of x. And now it's way safer to exponentiate on both sides because well now we have both sides with respect to logarithm and now we can use the inverse function basically base e on both sides. This is going to cancel out and then this is going to cancel out, leaving us with y to the log of x minus 1 power being equal to x. And well, now we can raise both sides to the 1 over log of x minus 1 power, leaving us overall with y with respect to x being equal to x to the 1 over log of x minus 1 power, identically equal for some values of x. And those values of x are for x being element of the real numbers plus without our boy the additive identity. Okay, this is important because this is a whole expression is going to be undefined for x being equal to zero. And since everything up here is symmetric, so you can interchange x and y, okay, because uh, multiplication commutes obviously in the real numbers, um, it's also, un no, snack fell down, it's also undefined for y being equal to zero. It just makes sense because um, if you were to plug zero into here, this goes to negative infinity. So we have one over negative infinity, which is zero. And then we basically have zero to the zero of power in some way. And this in itself is undefined. You can do some more analysis and think about it a bit more. It has to do with the number e basically. But for now, we are going to keep the domain as being x, being element of the real numbers, the positive real numbers without zero. 
Now we are going to take a look at a few certain points and we are going to roughly plot our function here on the chalkboard and then we are going to go over to Desmos yet again and see how the graph of the function actually looks. Really cool thing is, and this is where FlambleMaths2 comes in, is that on this interval our function here is actually bijective, meaning it allows for a real nice inverse. This function is actually its own inverse, which is which is really cool. So, so coming up with a function which is its own inverse is not too easy in a normal case. But here it just also happens that it's its own inverse which is really cool. And yeah, you can go over to FlambleMess2 and take a look at this part. Now we are going to take a look at some certain points and see if we can roughly graph our function that we are having here. So at first there's one really obvious point, namely for x being equal to 1. What happens if we have x being equal to 1? Well, we are going to take a look at this thing up here. Namely, if we plug x being equal to 1 into here, then we are going to have the logarithm of 1 times the logarithm of y. Well, and we know that the logarithm of 1 is just 0, 0 times something 0. If you don't have any apples, then you don't have any apples, all right? Which is 0 is thus equal to the logarithm of 1, so 0, plus logarithm of y. And if you add 0 apples to your log of y apples, then you just have log of y apples. Okay, log of y. Now you can either use base e on both sides or you can just observe, okay, with, with your sharp lens, you are going to notice that um, our y must be equal to 1 also, okay, for this whole thing to be equal to 0, meaning 1 and 1 is a point on our solution curve. Meaning, if we take a look at the solution curve, I'm going to plot it here roughly. Okay, we, we only care about the real numbers plus without zero, okay, on the x-axis. And since everything is symmetric on the y-axis too, y and x, then we have one one being a point of interest. Okay, this is one that we have here. Okay, what is another point that could possibly be cool? Well, why not take a look at our number e? Our number e is actually quite interesting in this context because we can find asymptotes there, horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Let us take a look at x being equal to e. If we plug this into here, then we have 1 over log of v. Okay, this is 1. 1 minus 1 is going to give us 0. This is 1 over 0. Okay, so we have e to the infinitive a power, basically infinitive. <laughs> Meaning, this whole thing goes to infinity at e. So, if we have, and since everything is symmetric, um, e is a bit more up here, let's, let's put it here. Since everything is symmetric, we can do the same argumentation for our y-axis here. Meaning, if we have e here, we are going to go through 1 in some way. How, how this part is going to look is, is really interesting, actually. We are going to go through 1, 1, but at this point, it's going to diverge and our solution curve is going to get asymptotes in some way. So meaning at this point where we reach E basically, so where we are going to go really close to E, we are going to get asymptotes actually and our solution curve is going to look something like this. And do you know what the coolest thing about this part is? This part in between, you are going to see it in Desmos, is nearly linear. This part that we are having here is, is nearly a linear function, which is extremely surprising. For some odd freaking reason, it's nearly linear. And my only explanation for this is if we take a look at y and x values between um, 0 and e, strictly between those two values, we basically have a root function here. So, so if we take a look at this term, we have the log of x minus 1 for root of x. And well, root functions, if we are between 0 and a certain value 1, so, so log of x is uh, a log of e is equal to 1 basically, if we have it between 0 and 1, they grow kind of slowly, kind of linear. It, if we take a look at the Taylor series approximation, kind of linear, okay? And this is my only explanation why maybe on this part, on this certain interval, it's, it's nearly linear. And one other cool thing is, if we take a look at a proportional function which goes through 1, 1, okay? Because the um, thing is, if we take this proportional function going um, um, 45 degrees up here, we are going to hit another sweet spot here that you can only really evaluate 
numerically I couldn't come up with a method to actually evaluate this thing uh, properly mathematically you can only re evaluate it numerically in my opinion um, this thing is actually the, the symmetry line because everything here is symmetric so we can just uh, ta take a look at this part of the graph and then basically reflect it to get our inverse function too okay it's its own inverse and yeah, this point up here is also one that, get, that gets hit by um, this linear function, our, sim, uh, our symmetry axis. Basically, just a tiny little fact I wanted to put into here. Um, also, thanks to what the heck to gone for covering this on his channel too. So check out Sam's channel if you haven't done so already. We are going to take a look at the Desmos graph now and we are going to see how this thing actually looks in, in kind of real computer screen laugh. <laughs> Hello guys and girls, me Mudaha. <laughs> we are going to take a look at the Desmos graph now and at first I would like to talk about the curiosity being that it's, it's nearly linear. If we zoom in here then on our first branch our function is nearly linear between 0 0.5 and 1 1.5 as the x values which is extremely curious. It just seems so unreal. This, this part of the graph is just really weird to look at considering that it's kind of a root function it's, it's just so mind-blowingly weird then we have that if we were to approach e on our um, x-axis and also on our y-axis we are going to make a full stop here and then suddenly we are going to continue with our second branch up here because we are having asymptotes vertical and horizontal asymptotes at that and they are going to continue close to e and then for all x values that you could possibly think of and then for all the y values that you could possibly think of both of them being positive this is the second branch that we are having and this is where bijectivity for the second channel flamble maps comes into if we restrict our domain and codomain to being um, greater than zero strictly greater than zero then our function is actually bijective and we can get ourselves the inverse function and bijectivity means that if we have um, if we take a look at a certain point here for example this one um, y of let's say 10. y of 10 being equal to y of 10 implies that 10 is equal to 10. So y of x being equal to y of z implies that x is equal to z. This is injectivity. It just means that we are not going to get a double value of x on some point here on the graph. This is injectivity. This is the first thing that you can immediately see. And it's also surjective, meaning for every positive y value that does exist a positive x value with y of x being equal to our function evaluate at this point basically. This is just surjectivity and both are satisfied, meaning it's bijective, meaning we can get an inverse function, which is it in itself. You can see this on Flample Maths too. And this inverse function you can construct by just taking a look at our y is equal to x our identity function and it's basically just a reflection here on this side so, so at first we are going to have this part um, on the right hand side underneath our y of x this is our first branch and then our reflection is basically the inverse function you could say and then we are going to hit 1 1 obviously as a common point and also this very curious point up here 7.389 which which it is approximately in some way and this is another weird point which I was talking about and you can go only really get it numerically I'm wondering is it if it is something like e squared I'm not certain about that maybe some experimenting around can get you really close to a certain value here this is everything I wanted to say about this graph and I'm going to give everything back to Papa Flemmy love you guys appreciate ya I just had to do a second take because this is seriously e squared, which does make perfect sense just because of the reason that um, 2 squared is equal to 2 plus 2, to the only number satisfying this. So this point is seriously e squared. Um, I should have seen this before. Plug e squared into our original equation and you are going to see it immediately. Oh, I'm so stupid. I'm out of here. <laughs> and this basically concludes the video. If you did enjoy the video, please like, subscribe, recommend, share if like. Don't forget to go over to Flammy too and take a look at the content over there. A lot of stuff is going to come out. I'm really excited about the calculus stuff. And yeah, make sure to check out the merch too. And up until the next video, I wish you guys a flamble day. Ciao.